Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu states that Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiyallahu anhu told me in person by word of mouth. I went to Syria when there was a peace accord between us and Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. During our stay in Syria, the letter of Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam reached Hiraqal, the emperor of Rome. Hazrat Ziya Kalabi took that letter and deposited it with the ruler of Basra. And he conveyed it to Heracl, Heraclius. Heraclius said, Is there anyone who belongs to the tribe of the person who has claimed prophethood? The people said, Yes. Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu said, I was then summoned along with a group of the Quraysh. We then entered the court of Heraclius. Heraclius settled us in front of him and asked, Who amongst you in terms of genealogy is the closest relative of the one who has claimed prophethood. Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu said, I am. They then seated me right before him and all my companions behind me. He then sent for his interpreter and said to him, Tell these people that I am going to ask him something about the person who claims that he is a prophet. If he tells a lie, you should declare him a liar. Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu said, by Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, if I had not been afraid of being branded as a liar, I would definitely have told a lie. He then said to his interpreter, Ask him about his, the Prophet's genealogy. I said, He belongs to a distinguished genealogy amongst us. He asked, Has there been any king amongst his ancestors? I said, No. He asked, Have you ever accused him of falsehood before his claim? I said, No. He again asked, Do the elite or the lower classes follow him? I said, Rather backward people. He asked, Are his followers increasing or decreasing? I said, No, but they are multiplying. He again asked, Does anybody lapse to his former religion being annoyed after embracing his religion? I said, No. He asked, Have you ever fought a war with him? I replied, Yes. He asked, what was the result of the war with them? I said, The war between us and them was like a bucket. Sometimes they snatched it and sometimes we did. He asked, Has he ever reneged on his promise? I said, No. But we do not know what he will do as long as we are here. Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu says, By Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, I could add nothing negative save this statement. He asked, did anyone else put in such a claim? I replied, No. He thereupon said to his interpreter to tell me, I asked you about his lineage and you said that he belonged to an esteemed lineage. And this is the practice that the Prophets والسلام, have been commissioned from the most esteemed lineage amongst their people. I then asked you whether there had been any king amongst his ancestors, but you replied in the negative. I thought, if there had been any king amongst his ancestors, I could have thought that he had claimed it to reign the kingship of his forefathers. I then asked you whether his followers were the lower classes or elite, and you replied that they were rather of low status, and generally, the lower classes follow the apostles a.s. I then asked you whether you would accuse him of telling a lie, and you replied in the negative. So I grasped that whoso did not tell a lie regarding people, how he could tell a lie about Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. I asked you whether anyone after entering his religion renounces his religion being annoyed with him, but you replied in the negative. It really happens when faith penetrates hearts. I then asked you whether his companions were increasing or decreasing, and you told me that they were rather multiplying. This is the feature of faith until it reaches its acme. I then asked you whether you had waged a war against him and you replied that you had a war with him and the fight was like a bucket. Sometimes he pulled it and sometimes you did. The apostles are trailed in the same way, but at last they get the final victory. And I asked you whether he had ever begged out of his promise and you replied that he never reneged on the promise. This is the practice of Apostles a.s. that they do not back out of the promises. I asked you whether anybody put in a claim similar to his, but you replied in the negative. 
I thereupon said to myself, If someone had claimed it, I would have remarked that this man had followed the former claim. Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu then said that Heraclius then inquired, What does he enjoin you? I replied, He commanded us to perform prayer, give poor due, reinforce the bonds of relation, and remain chaste. He said, If whatever you have said is true, he is really a prophet. I knew it well that a prophet was about to appear, but I had no idea that he would appear amongst you. If I had known it that I could reach him, I would have surely visited him. If I had been with him, I would have washed his feet, and he will soon rule over even the place under my feet. He then asked for the letter of Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and read it. It read, In the name of Allah jalla jalaluhu, the most affectionate, extremely beneficent. It is from Muhammad, Allah's Apostle, to Heraclius, the Emperor of Rome. Salutation be upon him who follows the divine guidance to proceed. Invite you to Islam. If you embrace Islam, you will remain secured. Embrace Islam. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu will grant you twofold reward. But if you reject to embrace Islam, the sin of your subject's rejection will also be into your account. Then there is the verse, O word, O people of book, come towards such a word as is common between us and you. That is, we worship none but Allah and associate no partner with Him, and none of us make one another as Lord besides Allah. Then if they do not accept, say bear witness that we are Muslims. Ali Imran, verse 64. When Heraclius finished reading this letter, a clamor raised near him and then, and there was a lot of hue and cry all around, and we were ordained to go out, so we were expelled. When I had come out, I said to my companions, The significance of Ibn Abi Qabsha, the Prophet wasallam, has greatly increased as the king of Bani Asfar, yellow-complexioned people. The Romans fears him. Thereafter, I felt sure that the religion of Allah's apostle sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam will soon become dominant until Allah Jalla Jalaluhu admitted Islam to my heart. Sahih Muslim Hadith Summer 4583